How long should your intervals be for maximum performance gains? This is a question that plagues many cyclists. Interval training is a game changer in the world of cycling. It's a powerful tool that can help cyclists boost their performance and outdo their personal bests. But here's the catch. Not all intervals are created equal. You see, the length of your intervals can have a significant impact on the results you achieve. Choose the wrong length, and you might be leaving big performance gains on the table. Like many cyclists, you might be wondering, so what's the optimal interval length? Well, a study by Seeler in 2013 might just have the answer to this common dilemma. This study compared the effects of three seven-week interval training programs, all varying in work period duration, but matched for effort. Intrigued? Stay tuned as we delve into this study that might just have the answer. The study we're discussing today focuses on the effects of different interval lengths on performance. This intriguing research was conducted over seven weeks, involving 35 recreational cyclists who were randomized into four distinct training groups. Each group was equivalent in terms of their training for the previous two months, clocking in roughly six hours per week with approximately one and a half intense sessions each week. The first group can be thought of as the control group. Their routine consisted of continuous training at low to moderate intensity. The cyclists in this group were instructed to increase their weekly training volume by 20 to 30 percent, undertaking four to six weekly sessions. The second group, on the other hand, had a different approach. They performed two weekly sessions of four by 16 minute intervals, with each interval separated by a three minute recovery period. Alongside this, they also performed two to three weekly workouts at low intensity. The third group of cyclists performed two weekly sessions, each comprising of four by eight minute intervals. These intervals were separated by two minute recovery periods. Similar to the second group, these cyclists also performed an additional two to three weekly low intensity rides. The fourth and final group completed two weekly sessions of four by four minute intervals with two minute recovery periods in between. This group also carried out two to three low intensity rides per week. A crucial instruction given to all the participants was to perform intervals at what was termed as maximal effort. This meant that each cyclist had to push themselves to their absolute limit during each interval, regardless of its length. In essence, the study aimed to compare the effects of three different interval training programs, each varying in work period duration, but matched for effort. Now that we understand the methodology, let's explore the results. The results of the study were quite intriguing. The post-test results revealed that the group that performed four eight-minute intervals twice a week showed nearly double the performance enhancement compared to the groups that did either four four-minute intervals or four 16-minute intervals. Quite an eye-opener, isn't it? Now let's delve a bit deeper into the numbers. The four by eight minute group exhibited the largest relative change in physiological capacity across all test parameters. The power at four millimoles per liter lactate, which is approximately the lactate threshold, improved from 241 watts to 280 watts. This improvement correlates to a lift from 2.7 to 3.2 watts per kilogram and an impressive increase in threshold power of 16%. In comparison, the 4x16-minute, 4x4-minute, and low-intensity groups displayed increases in threshold power of only 9, 8, and 8% respectively. When it comes to VO2 max, a measure of the maximum amount of oxygen a person can utilize during intense exercise, the 4x8-minute group again outperformed the others with a 10.4% improvement. The other groups lagged behind with improvements of 6.5, 5.6, and 3.4%. These results demonstrate that small changes in exercise variables can lead to significant differences in results. For instance, the three long interval formats induced slight differences in work intensity, but these slight differences resulted in significant differences in outcomes. These findings suggest that the four by eight minute interval allows for a more beneficial combination of intensity and duration, providing a greater total training stimulus per workout. What can we learn from these results? Let's find out. The 4.8 interval yielded nearly twice the performance enhancement compared with 4 hot hour 8 and 4 a 16 intervals. This statement alone speaks volumes about the power of small tweaks in your training regimen. It's not about drastically changing your routine, but rather fine-tuning it to achieve optimal results. So, let's delve deeper into what this means and why it's significant. The group that performed the 4.8 minute intervals showed the greatest improvement across all test parameters. But what makes the 4.8 interval so effective? 
Well, it's a combination of intensity and duration. This interval format allows for a more beneficial blend of these two factors, leading to a greater total training stimulus per workout. In other words, by slightly dropping your intensity, you can sustain the intervals for a longer period, thereby maximizing your training output. Interestingly, the study also highlighted the role of lactate, a byproduct of intense exercise, as a more sensitive measure of training intensity than heart rate. The 4.8 group, for instance, had an average lactate reading of 10 millimoles per liter after the third and fourth work periods, compared to 13 and 5 for the 4x4 and 4x16 groups respectively. This suggests that the 4.8 interval strikes a better balance between intensity and duration, leading to a more effective workout. However, it's also important to remember that these results are specific to the cyclists involved in this study. Factors such as individual fitness levels, training history, and personal goals can influence the effectiveness of different interval lengths. Therefore, while the 4.8 interval may offer significant benefits, it may not be the best choice for everyone. So, the takeaway here? Small changes can have a big impact. In the case of interval training, adjusting the length of your work periods can lead to significant performance gains. It's clear that the 4.8 interval has its advantages. But why is this the case? Well, let's get into the science behind these results in the next scene. The key takeaway here is the impressive efficacy of the 4 by 8 minute interval. This pattern has outperformed the 4 by 4 and 4 by 16 minute intervals, yielding nearly twice the performance enhancement. The 4 by 8 minute group displayed the greatest relative change in physiological capacity across all test parameters. What is more, it appears that by slightly reducing intensity, cyclists can sustain intervals for longer periods potentially inducing a greater total training stimulus per workout. So, the next time you hop on your bike, remember that a slight adjustment in your training routine can yield significant results. Remember, it's not just about working hard, but working smart. So if you enjoy this video, please like and share it, and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Until next time.